All right, guys. Well, once again, I'm here fiddling with Project Frankenstroke just a little bit. This is the uh, frame off of the donor truck, uh, the plow truck that um, we had here that we took the axles and the drivetrain from. Um, I'm sure glad I hang on to these things for a little while because I robbed some more things off of it here this morning. Um, these are the rear sway bar link mounts, uh, I guess is what you'd call them. Um, they mount differently on a 4x4 than they do on a two-wheel drive. So on a 4x4, this guy bolts onto the bottom of the frame here. And on a two-wheel drive, you can see they, they bolt right to the frame. I guess that's how they make up for the difference in height. Is uh, Not necessarily by changing the bar or the end link itself, but by changing the mount. And these are kind of scaly, but there's plenty of meat there, so I'm sure those will be fine. Uh, kind of same thing for the front end. Uh, this was a two-wheel drive truck. Um, a dual That figures, right? Uh, this was a two-wheel drive dually, so um, the mounting locations and everything are different for uh, sway bar end links. So these are for the front, and then I needed the uh, the bump stops for the front axle. So I got those off of that as well. Uh, once again, it was just like same process that we used when we removed the uh, spring shackles and the uh, spring perches. I uh, just used the grinder there and cut an X in the top of the rivet and then chop it off with an air hammer. Uh, you could do the same thing with a sharp chisel and a big big hammer. So, um, Burke bar for the win. That one saved me once again here. If you don't have one of these, uh, you should. It's a great big pry bar and it comes in handy. So that's it for now. Uh, I'm just pulling that stuff off. Um, gonna get some of this little stuff bolted onto the truck here today and uh, hopefully get the drive shaft taken care of here as well. So, trying to make a little bit of progress, keep this thing moving forward. All right, guys, well, we're making some progress today. Taking some things off the list here anyway. Most notably, back here. We have officially got a four-wheel drive truck. The block installed and got the rear drive shaft bolted up. Got our sway bar end links and brackets installed. So the back end of this thing is just about done with the exception of the fact that I think we're going to need to do a brake job. Looks like this wheel cylinder is leaking. So, we're going to need to pull that apart, I'm afraid. But at any rate, um, making some progress today. That's it for now. Alright guys, well... Making a little progress here in the back. Got our shock absorbers installed. We've got the sway bar end links installed. Pretty much I've got a uh, brake cylinder to do back there and we'll be finished up with the back end except to flush and refill rear differential so I'd kind of set my sights on the front end here for today and I've hit a snag so I noticed when I put this together that I was real close between the drag link bracket and the back side of the axle. 
can probably see that there. It's enough that if I were to push that bolt the rest of the way in and put the nut on it, it would hit the back of the axle housing. And that kind of gives me a sinking feeling, especially when I couple that with the fact that the sway bar and the drag link get together before I can get the sway bar up to the height where I should be able to put the end links on. You know, I've got these sway bar brackets that go in here. They go on the inside of the frame rail. Like that. Not right there. And then the sway bar goes from that bolt hole there down to here. But I can't get this link up high enough to make the sway bars reach. So knowing what I know about the abortion that was the attempt at converting this truck to four-wheel drive before, I dropped back 10 and decided to punt and took some measurements right in here. And long story short, these back spring hanger brackets are in the wrong place. So what I did is I measured on my crew cab F350 factory 4x4 single rear wheel. And I measured the distance between the back of the cab mount here, which is original to this truck. You can see it still has the factory rivets in it. That hasn't been moved. And this bracket, which they added when they started to convert this to four-wheel drive, first of all, the light where you can see it, they didn't even bother to put a bolt in the top hole there. I'm guessing because it was inconvenient to get up there and try to mark it and drill it. So I'd have that to fight with anyway. But in addition, on my truck down in the shed, between this face and this face, I've got almost an inch and three quarters. On this truck, got an inch. So what that means is that this bracket needs to go that way, three quarters of an inch. Now I was tempted at first to just leave it because I measured both sides and it is the same. So the axle is square underneath the truck. I think it would track down the road straight. It's not that it's crooked. It's just that it's too far back. So I think it would track okay. But what do I do about all this? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I think there's a chance that I could... Uh, take that bracket off put the bolt in backwards, clearance the head there a little bit, maybe clearance the webbing on that housing just a little bit and I could make it all clear. But that doesn't help me here. That doesn't help me get the sway bar into place. So, This was maybe two steps forward and two steps back today. I think those five bolts have got to come out. I've got to move that bracket forward. And I got to redrill six holes.
Yep. So that means I got some more structural work to do on this truck. Unfortunately. But I think that's what's got to be done to do it right. Let me get these brackets out of here. Um, I don't know if I want to bite that off yet this evening or not. But I think we know what we need to do. It's just a bugger. But again, I don't want this to be a basket case. I don't want this thing to be a mess. Anyway, it's like not even clear up against the frame. It's like instead of drilling this bottom bolt hole and bolting the bracket in place before they drilled these top two, they drilled one of these and then they were off and the bracket had slid down and it's not even tight up against the frame. It's just very poorly done. Uh, this side's not much better. So. I guess we got some work to do. That's it for now. I guess I'll get to work. All right, guys. Well, I've got the bolts out. Got the bracket moved forward. I've got one pilot hole started. But as you can see, I can't go forward much farther there. That's about as much as I'm going to be able to get. And um, I think that's okay. Um, based on what I'm seeing here, I, I think we're going to be in good shape there. I've got uh, about three quarters of an inch more clearance there between those two points than we did before. I just pulled this ground strap loose because I, it's kind of in the road while I'm drilling. Um, so I think we'll be in good shape. I've got uh, my holes center punched, except for that top one. That one's going to be interesting. Uh, that one may have to do some careful measuring and take an educated guess and try and drill it from the inside. Or I'm not sure how we're going to get a hole in there. That's probably why they left that bolt out when they put this in initially. Um, but as you can see, I've got uh, some little C-clamps in place here clamping the frame up tight to the underside of the, uh, the bracket, clamping those two together tight so that it's not going to move and that we've got the proper um, alignment to the critical surface there on the bottom of the frame. And then uh, we'll go ahead and start drilling our holes here. So obviously um, it's going to take some work. Whenever I drill holes in steel like this, um, there are a few things that I've learned. One is that uh, speed on the drill is not always your friend. You know, what speed does rather than cutting faster a lot of times is it just creates more heat. And as the tip of your drill bit heats up, it gets soft and it's easy to dull the tip of that bit. So run the drill slow. Uh, increase the speed just until you start making a good chip and then don't go any faster. I also use some cutting fluid. I like this Tap Magic. It's kind of one of my favorite cutting fluids. And then um, step your drill sizes up slowly. Uh, it's a pain in the butt because I'm down underneath the truck here. There's nothing to push against. You know, it's hard to get into position and to be able to put the force on the back of the drill that you need to to drill these holes. So, um, Take your time. Um, start with a small bit. I think this one's a 3 16 um, I've talked about this before, but if you look at the tip of a drill, you see that little cross section right there in the center that is just kind of a flat point, right? Right there. If I were to try and force this bit, which is my finished size of 25 64 if I'm to try and drill that in one shot, I have to physically push that metal out of the way right there at the tip of that bit. It does not cut there in the center. So the easier way to do that is to start with a smaller bit. You reduce the amount of um, metal that you're pressing out of the way there with just the pressure of the drill. 
you want focus. And you make it easier to drill the first hole. This one's starting to get just a little bit dull. So I start with about a 3 16 and then I'll go to kind of an intermediate size here. That'll be about halfway between that pilot hole and my finished size. And then I'll go to my full full diameter. So it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, doesn't make it easy. It just makes it a little easier. So that's a few tips and tricks. Um, big thing is to get your work positioned so that uh, you can mark all your holes accurately. Um, and in this case, fastening it up to the bottom side of that frame is what's important. So got some seat clamps in place. I'm going to keep drilling here and uh, we'll see how far I get before I either wear the drill out or it wears me out. I'm going to get back to work. All right, guys. Well, progress has been made. I've got um, spring hangers relocated. I um, compared a lot of my measurements and kind of alignment and things with um, my other truck. This one is not quite as far forward, but it's probably within a half an inch, and it is square from side to side. So, with that done, I'm able to get the track bar bolted into place. I've got good clearance around that track bar mount now, so it's not going to get into the axle here. And clear here. I still get against at a point, but um, I'm not sure that this thing is located quite right side to side here anyway. And I think that is sufficient to get me up to. Uh, the mounts that we'll install. I think it's going to hang about here. So, I think we're in good shape. That was not fun. Um, standing on your head down here on a creeper on the floor under the truck trying to drill holes in the frame is not my idea of a good time. But I feel better about where those are located now. I feel better about the way that they're mounted. Um, better about the fact that they're tight to the frame like they should be. And, uh, I think we're in good shape now. So I guess the next step is to get uh, those track bar uh, end link hangers or mounts mounted up to the frame and bolted into place. And um, still got to put the bump stops in around here as well. I think there are holes in the frame for those already, so it'll just be a matter of bolting them in. Shouldn't be too bad, but progress. That cost me, uh, well, not a day and a half's worth of work because I'm not out here working on it all day, every day, but um, about a day and a half's worth of calendar space with what little time I'm able to devote to working on it. So uh, I don't know what that was, three or four hours five, six, something like that anyway, to get those guys moved. But I feel like we're in a good spot here now. And uh, it's back on the floor, so making progress. All right, guys, we're back here in the shop working again on Project Frankenstroke. And I wanted to give you a little tip for laying out holes. Now, if you've been watching this series, you know that there is one of the holes that bolts the rear spring mount to the frame that's buried up inside uh, where I can't reach it to mark it or to drill it from outside the frame. But I want to show you a tip for laying out holes that are like that. If you've got yourself a protractor, what you can do is approximate the center lines of your two holes like such and if you know where the location of one hole is this one you can mark an arc through the center line of your other hole and then triangulate it to the position of one of your other holes so in this case I'm just using this steel rule and got it at the center line there, the center line of my other hole. 
get everything lined up here to show you. Center line of the other hole falls at about seven, and what do we got there? Seven sixteenths. Seven and seven sixteenths. So what I did then is I transferred, I just made a mark here so I can see that when I'm standing on my head up underneath the truck. Um, and again, I'll kind of show you what we're working on here. What that allows me to do is transfer the layout of those holes to the other side of the frame where I have access to drill them. So this is the outside, okay? This is that bottom hole that I took my layout from. And up in there is my top hole, clear up here. Now clearly, I'm not gonna get a drill up in there to drill that from the outside of the frame where I can see the hole in my bracket. So what I do is we slide around to the other side of the frame where I have some room. And I can get up in here and work. And again, see the pencil line that I made? See the arc? And then I stretched my measurement from here across to here. Seven and seven sixteenths. And I center punched a hole. I just put myself a little divot to start riding my drill bit. I left my bolts up there, but you'll have to believe me that when I drilled through with the larger diameter drill bit from the inside of the frame here, I lined up with the hole in the bracket. So that allowed me to basically transfer that layout to the inside of the frame here where I could lay it out and gain access to drill my holes. Just a little tip for you when you get into a pinch like this and uh, you need to make a layout. All right, guys, well, we've got the last of the holes drilled and um, got our sway bar mounts mounted to the frame. I was able to get in and drill holes and mount that top bolt hole on the spring bracket on both sides. And I'm about done drilling holes on this thing. <laughs> I'm tired of rolling around on my back and shavings in my face and down my sleeves and I'm ready to move on. So uh, making some good progress here. Marking a lot of things off of the list. I've added a few but um, we're getting real real close. Uh, I do need to bolt these bump stops in at some point. That's not a big job. I don't even think I'll need to drill holes for those. It looks like the holes are there in the frame already. So that won't be a bad job. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape here. So that's about it for this week's progress on this project. Um, it's been a long week of rolling around on my back underneath this thing, but we're in pretty good shape here. I think um, next couple of things will be to repair this leaky brake cylinder on the rear driver's side. Bleed the brakes out. And then I think we're just about ready for a test drive. So hopefully here within the next few days we'll get this guy out of the garage and be able to take him for a ride. See how it drives. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe uh, to keep up with the progress on the rest of this project and the other stuff that we're up to here on the farm. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.